I just feel like it should be out of the government's control. I just feel like we're going back in time. I'm not for abortion, um, but I think it's not the place of the state to uh, punish uh, uh, women for, for deciding to have an abortion. It's such an archaic law created by men to control women's bodies. It puts fear in my heart because I know that women are going to die. Arizona citizens and voters reacting to the news that their state Supreme Court had upheld a law from 1864 from before the state existed, from before women had the right to vote, that bans all abortions except those to save the life of the mother and mandates prison time for any doctor who performs one. It is one of the most severe laws in the country, and amid backlash, Republicans in the state of Arizona fell all over themselves to try to condemn the Supreme Court ruling, despite having supported similar restrictions in the recent past. That includes the disgraced ex-president who tried to distance himself from the ruling that was a direct result of his hand-picked Supreme Court members overturning Roe. Mr. President, did Arizona go too far? A doctor should be punished who perform abortions. Uh, I'll let that be to the states. You know, everything we're doing now is states and states' rights. Really telling on himself that last part, right? Cutting through all the denials and efforts to change the subject was State Senator Eva Birch, who made waves when she spoke on the floor of the Arizona State Legislature last month about the ordeal she was forced to endure to obtain abortion health care after finding out that her baby, the baby she was pregnant with, would not survive. Here's what she said yesterday, reminding the people of Arizona and all of us exactly who's responsible. Please believe me and understand, women will die. Please stop killing us with your arrogance. If you feel like your political party has been hijacked by radical extremists, that's because it has. I am just calling out to the people of Arizona and to the people of this country to please consider your loved ones, consider the reality of the consequences of these decisions, and join us, and be with us, and vote in November. This is a hostile and inhospitable environment for people who want to have children to grow their families. This is the result of Republican political extremists. And we have to break through this. We have to do better. Please come with us. Please help us. And uh, it is a pleasure to introduce that uh, joining our conversation is uh, Arizona State Senator Eva Birch and the president and CEO of the National Women's Law Center, Fatima Goss Graves. Basil is still with us. Um, Madam Senator, I, I played some of what I'd seen you say publicly, and I just first have to ask how do you take this epic personal tragedy, which is what any of these these tragedies are for any any woman who's pregnant and who who has a loss or has a diagnosis how do you find it in you to put it all out there for all of us thank you so much for inviting me and for having me here today it's such an important conversation I actually was grateful for the opportunity to be able to, to speak about my experience. I just think that the wrong people are controlling the conversation a lot of the time, that they take advantage of that. These are private matters. They take advantage of that people are, are grieving and are struggling and are not very likely to want to share that. I thought it was really important to break through some of the stigma that exists and to have a more honest, more comprehensive conversation about who the abortion patient is and, and what abortion care looks like. I was still pregnant. When when I made my initial speech and I, I had my procedure just days later and, and I wanted people to come along with me so that they could understand better and I wanted people who maybe are curious and have questions but feel uncomfortable or awkward asking those kind of questions to have somewhere to go something to look towards and how what have you heard what is what, what do people come up actually you know what let me first for our viewers that didn't see it let me show our viewers that original floor speech if you don't mind okay I don't know how many of you know this but a few weeks ago I learned that Against all odds, I am pregnant. And right now, the safest and most appropriate treatment for me and the treatment that I choose is abortion. But the laws that this legislature has passed has interfered with my ability to do that, along with countless others. I stand with those who have had to grapple with and navigate Arizona's restrictive laws surrounding abortion in a time when the decisions being made were complicated enough. I'm with them. 
I appreciate them. I am them. I am them. I mean, you just almost never hear that from any public figure, um, and especially around these issues. Um, what I wanted to ask you was, what what have you heard in return? What what? Because sometimes putting yourself out there brings back the most unexpected sort of um, opening up from from other people, from your constituents. That's exactly what the response has been. I've had countless emails, people sending mail here to the Senate, people sending me messages on social media and to my campaign website, just so many people coming to me and sharing their own personal stories and just feeling grateful that they feel like they now have a seat at the table. You know, it's so difficult to watch these things happen and to feel so helpless and to feel like you don't have a voice. And I'm just so grateful that I've been able to have some control over this situation if, if, if in no other way in the messaging about what abortion care is and, and to be able to, again, represent so many people who have been through similar circumstances and others that were sometimes much more difficult and complex. You know, Arizona's Supreme Court is in the exact position that the United States Supreme Court is in, right? 81 percent of all Americans think that abortion should be between a woman and her doctor. Um, in Arizona, those numbers aren't, aren't too different. Um, what can be done. I mean, the the the, the public reaction, um, the universally unpopular nature, even among Republicans, um, is is clear. But what can we do for women who, in 14 days, will have to live under this draconian new law? Well, I'll tell you, there are a couple of, of possibilities right now. The most pressing, of course, would be to pass something through the Arizona legislature. And what really needs to be said about that is that we could have done that at any point in time. We could have done this two years ago when abortion clinics closed down all around the state of Arizona after the uh, overturning of Roe. We should have done this a long time ago, and we've been in session since January. We've known that this was being litigated at the Arizona Supreme Court, and, and it's really now too little too late, and people are scrambling to try to fix this problem. And um, so we, we could potentially do something here in the Arizona legislature to, to repeal that ban. Um, otherwise, we really are looking at November and at the mm. ballot initiative. I'm sure that they're going to continue to work things through the lower courts. And, and I know our attorney general is working very hard to try to see if there are solutions on her end. But uh, I think that the, the two things that are the, the most pressing where people can actually have some influence are, of course, here in the legislature and, and writing your representatives and making phone calls and doing what you can to put pressure on the Republican legislature, since obviously all of the Democrats are supportive of this repeal. And, uh, and again, just really getting involved and making sure that we get this ballot initiative across the finish line and that people come to vote in November to make sure that it passes. Nowhere where abortion was on the ballot has it failed at the ballot box. And I wonder what you want people to know about your state and what you want people to know as Arizona um, becomes the next state to embark on a ballot process. Well, I am very hopeful, again, that um, we can follow in those same footsteps. I think that the most important thing for, for people to know is that this ballot initiative isn't a fix. You know, mm. we really need to be electing pro-choice candidates up and down the ticket from the presidency down to our state legislatures. And even if we do get a short-term fix in the legislature sometime uh, in the next two weeks, we have Republicans on the record for years with their voting history, with their public statements, with legislators legislative proclamations uh, promising us that they're going to continue to try to erode these rights. This fight isn't over yet. And so, yes, we need to do what we can for this ballot measure, but we also need to hold our electeds accountable and we need to make sure that we are holding ourselves accountable to support and promote and elect pro-choice candidates up and down the ticket in Arizona so that this doesn't continue to happen because it will. If we continue to have the representation in Arizona that we have now, these rights are going to continue to erode the way that they have for decades under our current Republican leadership. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.